Well, the Democrat knives are out for Judge Brett Kavanaugh. Yeah, the Democrats are hysterical. They are desperately trying to dig up dirt on Judge Brett Kavanaugh, Donald Trump's Supreme Court pick to replace retiring Justice Anthony Kennedy. And it's really hilarious watching them because by all rights and accounts, Kavanaugh has lived an incredibly clean and good life. The guy isn't particularly wealthy. He's been in government service his entire life. Money doesn't seem important to him. What he really enjoys is his family and coaching his daughter's basketball team, being a community uh, member. Basketball teams, actually, he coaches two youth basketball teams. The funniest part of this is, and I'm going to tell you in a moment, the worst opposition research the Dems have come up with, the left has come up with, it's pretty laughable. But the right is countering with pictures of Kavanaugh serving food to the homeless. Yesterday, there was an op-ed in the Washington Post about how, uh, by a neighbor of Kavanaugh, I'll paraphrase it, she's actually the mom of his daughter's classmate, and she says, essentially, I don't know much about him as a judge, but he has unanimous support from everybody that knows him as a person. And this woman talks about his community service and how the kids call him Coach K and how he's the carpool dad in the summer, driving all the kids around. But most importantly, right before the end of the story, this woman talks about how her husband passed away three years ago. And the hardest part of that, well, she says a few years ago, and the hardest part of that was that her daughter no longer had anyone to take her to the father-daughter dance at the school where she goes with Kavanaugh's daughter. Well, she says Kavanaugh immediately stepped up and he brings his daughter and that little girl every year and acts as her surrogate dad for that dance so she doesn't feel left out. He's a good guy. He's a nice, good guy. Well, that wasn't enough for the Democrats because they dug their dirt, boy. They really dug in. Apparently, apparently, Judge Kavanaugh does have two fatal flaws. They're really egregious. They're really, really egregious. Kavanaugh racked up somewhere between $60,000 and $200,000 in debt because he had the disgraceful audacity to renovate his home and to buy baseball tickets in bulk for he and his friends. And even worse, it looks like He actually paid off most of the debt and the friends for whom he bought the baseball tickets gave him the money and he paid his credit cards. Yep, that's what the the Dems have. That's all they've got on this guy. That's all they've got. (laughs) It said, I'll read you this from the Hill. Havanaugh has reported having up to $200,000 in credit card debt over the last 10 years. So 20 grand a year uh, in debt. Now they're actually wrong about it having been credit card debt. Because the actual disclosure says credit card and or loan debt. And included in that 200000 are renovations on his home. Well, that really isn't a lot of money. $20,000 a year when you're buying season baseball tickets and renovating your home really isn't a lot of money. A lot of people take equity loans on their home to renovate their home, to update their home. This is insignificant. Insignificant. He earned six figures as a federal judge. His wife... Has, has a good job. This is not a lot of money. That, that probably breaks down to somewhere in the neighborhood of $1,200 a month for them on that home equity loan and the few grand he spent on baseball tickets. And why shouldn't he? He's a sports fan. Other people buy boats. They're a lot more expensive than 20 grand a year. The guy likes baseball. Not to mention that he bought the baseball tickets in bulk. Smart idea, right? You get miles on your credit card for his buddies and then his buddies pay him. I have a friend who buys football tickets. I don't want to go to NFL games anymore, but he would buy tickets in bulk. And when we went to the games, we'd pay him for the tickets. He's a very wealthy guy. He was spending about 40,000 bucks a drop through his company, buying out a massive box at Dolphin Stadium down here in South Florida because some of us were buying the tickets with him before the NFL got crazy and went far left. And he would use many of those seats for clients. He's a very large, very successful company. And he would use those seats for clients. This is not something unusual. I go to dinner with my friends all the time. I pick up the tab, they pick up the tab, I pick up the tab, they pick up the tab, or I put it on my card and then they give me cash. Now, sure, if I'm out with five guys and we're drinking a lot of wine, Cardolo spent $1,000 on dinner in one night. Well, not really. Because the other four guys, five guys at the table all, you know, threw me 150 bucks and we settled up the tab. It's so stupid. 
stupid that they're making an issue of this. So they said, uh, so this is my favorite part of the Hill story. The last paragraph should have been the lead, but the last paragraph last year, Kavanaugh's credit card debts and loan appeared to be paid off or fell below the year's reporting requirements, meaning it was down nothing, a few grand, according to the Post. Watch, this was Washington Post story. And Raj Shah, the White House press secretary, deputy press secretary, told the Washington Post that Judge Kavanaugh's friends reimbursed him for their share of the baseball ticket and that Kavanaugh is no longer going to buy season tickets for his friends. There it is. <laughs> it is a non-issue. It was a lead story in the Washington Post, repurposed by The Hill, painted, or I should say published, to paint Kavanaugh as a deadbeat. And the headline on The Hill, Kavanaugh incurred tens of thousands in credit card debt buying Washington Nationals tickets. The last paragraph says, oh, but he paid it all off and a lot of that was for his buddies. He bought them in bulk and they reimbursed him. This is why we call it, we call it, this is why we call it fake news. I want to bring you this content every day, and I hope you stick in with me every day. I'm also bringing you my live show, Off the Cuff. Well, it's now Declassified Live every morning live, 7.30 to 8.30 a.m., right here on The Rebel. Tune in. I'll see you guys tomorrow.